On the topic of cholesterol and testosterone, the medical community has done a number of things that confuse people. First, LDL is mistakenly called bad cholesterol by doctors. This is literally laughable because LDL is necessary for human life. It's not bad. Yet, even when you Google LDL, it says that LDL is often referred to as bad cholesterol, simply because the propaganda arm of Big Pharma has such a long reach. It's become part of our culture to say LDL is bad cholesterol. But LDL is definitely not bad. It's necessary for life. And LDL is especially key for your brain and your sex hormones, because your brain is one of the fattiest organs in your body, and your sex hormones are made from cholesterol, like your testosterone and your estrogen. They're made from cholesterol. LDL is simply a fat transporter. It carries fats through your body because your blood is aqueous and fats float on water, so fats need a transporter. I refer to LDL as a taxi for fats or a limo for fats, and that's not a bad thing if you're burning fats for energy. In fact, it's good to have high LDL if you are keto and you're burning fats for energy rather than burning sugar for energy. Uh, anyway, one thing that tricks a lot of professionals into thinking LDL is bad is that smoking cigarettes raises LDL. So if you do a population study, people with higher LDL are often smokers and they have worse health outcomes of all sorts. So the inference is often made that LDL must be bad. It's a correlation does not equal causation thing. And even well-intentioned people fall prey to this thinking. But LDL isn't damaging your body. What's damaging a cigarette smoker's body is all that inflammation from smoking cigs. That's the root cause of those increased health problems. Another one that tricks medical doctors into thinking LDL is bad, compounding the problem of smoking, is that binge drinking raises LDL plus sedentary lifestyles or lack of exercise raises LDL, plus psychological stress raises LDL. In other words, there are a number of bad habits that legitimately ruin people's health, and these bad habits also lead to higher LDL, and then the LDL gets blamed for the damage that the bad habits caused. But here's where things get interesting. Cholesterol is a crucial necessary precursor in the synthesis of testosterone, meaning your testosterone is made from cholesterol through a series of enzyme reactions. So obviously it's critical for you to have freely available cholesterol in your body. Dare I even say it's good for you to have high levels of freely available cholesterol, assuming those high levels aren't the result of smoking or binge drinking. But here's where the medical system has done everyone another massive disservice. They call LDL cholesterol, but LDL is a ball of fats of all types, which includes cholesterol, but LDL is not exclusively cholesterol. Not even close, really. It's only about 10% cholesterol. In fact, if I was in charge of the government HHS, I would make it a point to stop calling LDL LDL cholesterol and HDL, HDL cholesterol, and total cholesterol probably shouldn't even be measured because it's man-made, made-up bullshit formula containing LDL, HDL, and triglycerides, but let's at least stop saying total cholesterol and just say lipoproteins, which are what these things are, if you're going to do a blood test for such things. But anyway, all that being said, LDL does have a good amount of cholesterol that it carries around your body. According to this study from the year 2000, obviously keeping in mind that we don't know what the diet was of the test subjects involved, but we can make some assumptions that it was fairly high carb because that's true of 99% of studies from recent times. But this study found that only about 10% of LDL is cholesterol and about 41% of LDL was cholesterol ester which is cholesterol with a fat attached to it. So LDL is definitely shuttling fats around our bodies, as I said before, and cholesterol is definitely part of this shuttling process, whether it's a regular cholesterol or cholesterol with a fat attached to it, which again is just called cholesterol ester. And here's something you may not know from this study called the effect of inflammation and infection on lipids and lipoproteins. With inflammation, you find an increase in LPA. 
So that's a video we'll do on a different date because LPA is more readily oxidized compared to LDL. So I think LPA is legitimately problematic for heart disease. Furthermore, inflammation also increases small dense LDL due to increased amounts of triglycerides being added into LDL. And triglycerides are definitely problematic for health, which is a different video that I've already done. So watch that at some point, it's crazy interesting. And inflammation from diet or bad gut bacteria, by the way, makes LDL more easily oxidized probably because triglycerides are so much more easily oxidized compared to cholesterol. So if you pump more trigs into the LDL, you end up with more oxidation and eventually more damage to arteries from the inflammation. Not from the LDL, not even from the oxidized LDL, to be honest. The damage to the arteries occurs because of a host of triggers cascading from the real root cause inflammation. Inflammation is the thing that raised the oxidation of LDL. It's always the root cause of artery damage. Gut inflammation, binge drinking inflammation, cigarette smoke inflammation, lack of sleep, which impedes your ability to flush out inflammation. Whatever, it's always inflammation that's the problem. And it always will be. You can't drug inflammation because inflammation triggers a host of cascading problems. So drugs will always fall short by trying to play whack-a-mole with dozens or hundreds of new symptoms that pop up from all the inflammation that ultimately came from the cigs or alcohol or lack of sleep or seed oils, whatever. The only way to address inflammation is to eat healthy, get sunshine, get good sleep, exercise, get optimal vitamins, avoid pesticides and preservative rich foods. <laughs> Avoid processed foods in general, avoid chronic infections, avoid bad gut bacteria, overgrowth, things like that. But LDL is never bad. It just tricks well-intentioned people sometimes, and it's used to trick well-intentioned medical professionals by not well-intentioned pharmaceutical companies. Anyway, the title of this video is Cholesterol Raises Testosterone. And don't forget that women have testosterone also at higher levels than E2 which is estrogen, E2 is estrogen, for women's entire lives. So this is important for men and women. But if you go to the AI and you ask if cholesterol raises testosterone, the AI will say no, because of this study from 2023 called cholesterol intake and serum cholesterol levels are not associated with total testosterone levels in men. And notice first that they always ignore women in these studies, which is a genuine shame because women have so much testosterone relative to estrogen for their whole lives. And it would be super valuable health information. But anyway, what did they find in this study? Conclusion, dietary cholesterol intake and total cholesterol levels are not associated with total testosterone levels in men from the USA. Is that the end of the story? Not at all. Maybe for an AI, but not for me, because I know how scientific research gets manipulated. I've published peer-reviewed studies. And keep in mind that you choose your peer reviewers when you publish in these science journals. Anyway, getting back to this study conclusion, first, I'm glad they distinguished that these are USA men, because USA men have terrible health habits, which we'll talk about in a minute. Secondly, this study was performed using not one, but two 24-hour food recalls, meaning this was a ridiculous questionnaire study where they just ask people what they eat and then they measure their testosterone. People that do these types of studies should be taken behind the shed and shot or at least fired from research and maybe banned from teaching or publishing this type of crap research at these terrible colleges they come from. Now, since we all know none of this will happen, they're literally promoting these people as I speak, probably to chairs of departments. But let's just me and you recognize here that this is garbage first and foremost. And we need to be watchful for this brand of garbage. The, these questionnaire food recall studies are used to promote the vegan diet and they're used to promote seed oils and they're used to say cholesterol doesn't influence testosterone. And they're used to say all sorts of other nonsense and then they, they use this nonsense to make amazing headlines from the studies and these headlines trick people and they even trick the AI like chat GPT. And this leads to further garbage disseminated by the mainstream media. But these studies do nothing but confuse people and lead people down the wrong path. 
In fact, the only thing I liked about the questionnaire study here was they referenced a few real studies in the introduction where they admitted that a ketogenic dietary intervention, which increased total fat intake and likely increased cholesterol intake, increased total testosterone levels. Plus, they mentioned that a recent study showed that an increased intake of cholesterol through daily intake of three whole eggs, which isn't that many by the way, three whole eggs for a 12 week period, increased total testosterone levels. Uh, looks like a typo in that line by the way, they forgot to say it 12 week period. But here is the actual titles from those studies. In addition, if you look at the flip side of this, in other words, if you, if you put people on the low fat, high fiber diet, you see testosterone plummet with a p-value of less than 0 0.0001, meaning it's a very consistent drop. And just so you know, the numbers from that study, the average man went from testosterone of 444 nanograms per deciliter down to 383, which is a terrible average testosterone. Now remember a minute ago when I, I said I'd revisit that these studies are being done on men from the USA? meaning they probably have a baseline health that is not optimal. They probably have poor sleep, a considerable number of them smoke, probably a bunch of them uh, binge drink, and they probably all eat processed seed oil foods daily. So even if you have a study that shows higher cholesterol in men, tracks with lower testosterone, it shouldn't surprise you because these men have higher cholesterol because of all the bad habits they're engaged in. To illustrate this point, look at the title of this study, which says it all. Oxidized LDL correlates inversely with testosterone in young adult male smokers. Meaning if you smoke, it raises your LDL, especially your oxidized LDL, which lowers your testosterone. So if you did a massive population study and had people with high cholesterol from smoking, those same people would indeed have lower testosterone because that high cholesterol was result of smoking rather than eating a high sat fat diet. Now keep in mind, a high fat keto diet has been shown on numerous occasions in studies to raise cholesterol and raise testosterone. I've already showed you the Wilson study where keto raises total testosterone, but here are a few more. Keto rapidly augments testosterone in non-diabetic obese subjects. And this one shows increased testosterone in obese men on keto also. And there's this one, the ketogenic diet corrects hypogonadism. That means it reverses people's severely low testosterone. And this 2022 study, ketogenic state improves testosterone serum levels, which basically says it all. In other words, if you have high LDL, because of your bad habits, your testosterone will be ultra low. If you have high LDL because you're eating animal fats, similar to the way your ancestors ate for thousands of years, you will raise your testosterone. That's the key distinction you should know. Furthermore, keep in mind, almost everything that improves your health improves your testosterone. If you get good sleep, you raise your testosterone. If you lift weights, you raise your testosterone. If you give your body the proper building blocks like egg yolks and red meat, you raise your testosterone. And on the flip side, if you get terrible sleep, you lower your testosterone. If you have vitamin and mineral deficiencies, you lower your testosterone. If you smoke cigs, you lower your testosterone. So my overall point here is this eat a reasonable amount of saturated fat for starters because scientists have done a meta-analysis of 60 controlled trials not just questionnaire bullshit and they find replacing sat fats with carbs or unsaturated plant fats significantly reduced total cholesterol which is the building block for testosterone conversely diets higher in sat fats were associated with increased total cholesterol concentrations. And they're talking about LDL, but LDL has cholesterol, which is ultimately what you need to raise if you want more testosterone. And just because I already know I'm going to see it in the comments, someone is gonna say, yes, but our bodies can make as much cholesterol as they need, and it doesn't need to come from diet, and it doesn't need to come from saturated fat. But the reason egg yolks raise testosterone and saturated fat heavy Keto diets raise testosterone is the same reason red meat intake raises creatine. Even though our bodies can make things from scratch, if you wanna be fully optimized, if you want to get these nutrients up 
at higher levels in your body, you want to eat plenty of these things. A great example of this is creatine because it's so well studied. They've done so many studies that a systematic review was published in 2020 on the benefits of creatine supplementation for vegetarians compared to meat eating athletes. And they casually mentioned that creatine is naturally found in most meat products. Therefore, vegetarians have reduced creatine stores. And overall, it appears vegetarian athletes are likely to benefit from creatine subs. And they're not even talking about vegans here, just vegetarians, because the British Journal of Medicine in 2003 found that vegans had significantly lower muscle creatine concentrations, even compared to lacto-ovo vegetarians. And what this means, once again, is despite the fact that our bodies can make creatine from scratch, if we get more in our diets, our bodies store more and use more. If we have nice high levels, our bodies will continue using it for all the various functions in our muscles, our skin, our brain. Keep in mind that 25% of the body's total cholesterol is in the human brain, and the dry weight of the brain is 60% fat of which about 25% is straight cholesterol. So our bodies need loads of cholesterol all around, but if you have a nice dietary surplus, your body can comfortably raise testosterone to beautifully high natural levels. I've done DNA consults with a number of men over the age of 50 that have a total testosterone over 1,200 nanograms per deciliter, which would be 41 in European units, nanomoles per liter. So you'd be surprised how effective this can be in real life, assuming you have everything else dialed in regarding your overall health. So my overall point here is this. If you want to raise your testosterone to the max, I suggest you eat plenty of saturated fats and maintain an intentionally high LDL cholesterol alongside all your other healthy habits like amazing sleep hygiene, optimized vitamins and minerals, consistent weight training, zero binge drinking and smoking, uh, plenty of sunshine, minimal psychological stress. And I want to acknowledge that there is a lot of disagreement in this area and even the AI says that raising cholesterol does not raise your testosterone. Uh, and you should recognize that scientific studies are quite hit or miss on this topic, but I'm hoping you can see where I'm coming from with this apparent contradiction and these conclusions, and you can always check your serum testosterone for like 30 bucks via ownyourlabs.com. So check your testosterone, unless you live in the communist state like Massachusetts or New York, where they, they won't legally allow you to check your own blood work. But ultimately, you can experiment and see what works best for you. Everyone, man, and women, at least after puberty, should check their testosterone on a fairly regular basis, especially if you're starting off low.